Hi all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favourite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Uh, today's video is sponsored by the European diving brand Techline, who are very quickly rising in the ranks of popular dive gear manufacturers, and they do make a lot of snazzy dive gear from tough traditional designs to more modern dive gear made for the modern diver. Uh, but today I'm here to talk about things that suck about being a scuba diving instructor. Everybody selling you the qualification will tell you about how awesome it is to be a diving instructor. And, and it is, to be fair. Uh, you will see lots of pictures and videos of smiling students and instructors in tropical waters. Uh, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows and just playing around and splashing in the water. As with most professions, there are plenty of downsides and things that just straight up suck about being a dive instructor. That whilst I don't really want to put you off becoming an instructor, it is important that you do get a full idea of kind of what sucks about being a dive instructor, like people asking when you're gonna get a real job. Um, when you start chatting and discussing careers, um, you, you get that one a fair amount. The bane of most professions is also a pain in the scuba diving world. Uh, as a dive master, you are not properly introduced to the amount of paperwork that you need to process as a full dive instructor. For each student, you need to ensure that they have each completed all of the enrollment forms properly. And usually you have to go through said forms with each student to make sure that they write the correct information down properly uh, so that A, you can read it later on if you need to refer back to it. Uh, and if something may happen because a lot of those forms are legally binding, uh, but only when filled out properly. And after each dive, you need to fill out logbooks. You need to sign every student's logbook and depending on the agency and the course that you're teaching, sign off individual skills with dates and print your name by each line. So that's a lot of repetition and I very quickly changed my signature to something that was much faster for me to write and didn't give me cramp in my hand after the second student because you are signing, dating and uh, filling out your name quite frequently. The best advice here is to fill out paperwork as early as possible so that it doesn't build up. But do make sure that it's filled out properly before you sign anything. It's very easy to sign your name on something that you didn't intend to. Just because someone put something in front of you, don't automatically sign it. Failing students can be incredibly hard, uh, or sometimes satisfying, depending on the student. Uh, but one of the main reasons for me becoming an instructor was the joy in teaching others a skill that they can then go on to use to explore the underwater world. And while some students can just sail through the course, others do struggle. Sometimes this struggle is a fear of the water itself. I've had students in the car park in tears at just the thought of this large body of water in front of them. And they need the right confidence boost or someone to just listen to them and know if it's better for them to skip this dive. You have to know that kind of balance. For others, it's a skill that they just cannot perform. These are the real like heartbreaking ones because they've done all of the skills um, they've passed all the classroom work, they've done the skills in the pool, uh, they've even done part of the skill in open water, but they need to be competent for you to sign them off for that particular skill. If they just kind of do it, yeah, that's not quite good enough. You have to do it again, but do it confidently and competently. Uh, and that means, yeah, if they can't do it, you have to be the one that tells them that you're not signing them off for this course that they've paid for. That's why it's quite important to tell them early on that this is a performance-based course. You don't get the qualification just by paying the fees. You actually need to complete the course, but you have to be the one to tell them to, you know what, stop. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna stop the course here. Ah, 
Dive Medicals. Um, now, this may be different where you are, but here in the UK, uh, the health and safety executive rules over all, and if they want to be sure that you are fit and healthy enough to teach others to scuba dive, then you will have to prove that once a year as long as you want to continue to teach and you need to be poked and prodded and assessed once a year. The first problem is finding a dive doctor to do it. There aren't a huge number of places that do it. You can't just go to your local GP or whatever. It has to be a specific dive doctor. Uh, my last one was at Midlands Diving Chamber. Uh, I can highly recommend them. They do an awesome job. And the test comprises of a health and background chat, just to make sure that there's anything, any worries that you may have. Uh, then you get your sight and your hearing tests, um, is the, the usual kind of tests. Uh, a full, full, physical examination, including a full-on step test, uh, which is a lot like the bleep test, if you remember them in school, uh, but you're doing step-ups and then monitoring your heart rate and everything whilst you're doing it, uh, and it just progressively gets faster and faster and faster until you just hope it ends. Um, lung function tests. <sighs> They, they really test to make sure that your lungs are working for some unbeknownst reason. Um, your BMI, urinalysis, uh, and blood pressure as well. They, they test absolutely everything. Um, it's not something that you can just blag your way through, uh, and it is something that you do need to repeat every year. So be sure to put it in your calendar uh, to stay in status, and an alert like a month or two beforehand to you know prepare yourself beforehand. You're not a morning person. Well, that sucks for you because you are now a morning person. Um, on time is half an hour late. That is your new life motto as a dive instructor. Uh, the instructor should always be the first person to arrive and also be properly prepared for anything that you can reasonably expect. And that means a lot of early mornings, traveling and organizing paperwork and dive gear and checking conditions, weather conditions and everything beforehand. Do your future self as much of a favor as possible and be as organized as possible. Uh, just so that if you suddenly remember, oh, did I pack such and such? Well, yes, because I always pack such and such. Future you will be grateful uh, if all of your student record folders are neatly stacked for the next course, uh, all of the pool cylinders are full and everything is just quick and easy to just load into the truck. But don't just think about the diving, you have a classroom now. Make sure that the classroom is clean and tidy with all the supplies that you could possibly need and spares also so that you can at least look like a professional instructor. Oh, and your work doesn't finish when you get back to the surface or even after you've filled out logbooks um, or even after the students have left for the day because you need to organize all of that school equipment, wash it down, refill cylinders, uh, write up any incidents, book in any faulty equipment and clean up the pool and classrooms ready for the next class. For two or three hours of actual scuba diving, the days can be really, really long early mornings and late evenings of both mentally and physically demanding work, um, delegate as much as you can. And that's what dive masters and students are for. Post dive, you're tired, you're probably cold, you're decompressing, so you shouldn't be doing too much physical work anyway, but it still needs to be done and it's your responsibility. Oh, and then you need to file the paperwork so that the students then get their cert cards. So you gotta do it just as soon as it comes, otherwise it starts to really pack up. Students are slow. Um, they don't have the years of experience and time in the water that you do, so you'll find that you will very quickly leave them behind in the water, even swimming at a slow pace. 
anything that you miss out or skip over uh, because to you it's obvious that you would seal the inlet to your first stage before washing it uh, to students if you tell them to dunk their regulators to wash them between dyes then that whole thing is going to go in the dunk tank without even a dust cap to protect it you need to be so religiously comprehensive about everything and if you miss something out you're going to have some ruined dive gear or some hurt students never rush anything and avoid shortcuts when you're leading a dive turn around sooner than you think very very frequently especially if they're like foundational courses keep turning around to make sure that everything's all right a lot can go wrong behind you in a very short amount of time and you're only increasing the distance you're going to need to swim back to sort it out Ha, it must be that time of year again, not because you start to see the Christmas decorations in shops, but because you start to receive emails informing you that you can get an early bird discount on your instructor fees if you only sign up for a direct debit. Um, yes, if you didn't know, uh, you need to pay yearly fees to stay in teaching status with most training agencies. As sure as death and taxes, if you want to continue teaching certain courses, then you need to pay. The amounts they're not ridiculous amounts and if you're an active enough instructor you should recoup that cost pretty soon but it is annoying that you basically need to pay to be able to work and make money the same with medicals those aren't free servicing your dive equipment that's not free uh, you need to account for all of the costs of just keeping yourself and your equipment up to scratch to be able to teach No matter whether you're there to actually teach or just to have a fun dive, you're often the most qualified diver there and you have certain expectations on your shoulders. Everybody will look to you for what to do in certain situations and make decisions and whilst you're working you certainly have a duty and a standard of care to adhere to, diving for fun should something bad happen, you get into kind of a, a legal grey area depending on where you are and the situation itself. Regardless of whether you have a duty of care or not, in a lot of cases, if the operator knows that you're an instructor, you will find yourself helping out and babysitting other divers when you just want to have some fun. Uh, if you have the right mindset though, you'll find it quite hard to switch your like instructor senses off uh, around a dive site, looking at other divers and seeing what's going on. You'll find yourself naturally helping out other divers and when another diver's gear goes bang, they'll often look to you for tools and spare parts because, hey, he's an instructor. You really need to love scuba diving itself and everything that comes with it. It's very easy to get into the routine of only ever going scuba diving with a student and at the same dive sites over and over again, unless you want to live a kind of a nomadic lifestyle, hopping from one dive center to another and starting from scratch each time. The courses that you'll be teaching also is a bit of a pyramid um, tons of tri dives and foundational courses at the bottom and then as you get up to the more advanced courses fewer and fewer numbers uh, you'll have your tri dive and your foundational course routine just very quickly sorted so that you can teach one of those in your sleep the more advanced courses they're a bit more interesting for you because you don't do them as frequently but after a while it all does become a bit repetitive Too many divers and non-divers don't really see dive instructor as a career. Uh, they just see it as like, it's not a real job. Uh, it's just kind of a bit of fun. Uh, firstly, in your paycheck as an entry level instructor, it often seems to be a race to the bottom with some dive centers to be as cheap as possible and just not earn their worth or reasonably cover their costs. There's not a lot of margin in it. Once you get to the like the real upper tech levels, you should be able to make a decent living, but yeah, there's so many entry level instructors out there, it's really hard to leverage a decent wage. 
The same with job progression. Uh, you need to stay up to date with your learning. Um, you need to learn and train new skills and promote yourself uh, as the best instructor out there. So that includes everything from learning how to service equipment to not only service equipment but to better understand how it works you can then teach that um, to boat handling courses and social media as well write yourself up like a five and ten year plan to work out where you want to be and how to get there so that you don't idly follow the 20 something percent of instructors who hang up their fins in the first three years the problem with that is that scuba instructor doesn't really transfer very far outside of the diving industry. Most workplaces will look at that line on your CV and go, hmm, okay, and then glaze straight over it. You really need to plan to see if you can make a living and really embrace this kind of lifestyle if you want to do it long term. It also sucks when you do most of the hard work for a student doing all the classroom and the pool work only for said students to then go on holiday and do their qualifying dives abroad with a different instructor they get all of the glory the qualification numbers on their record and their name on the cert card even though you actually did all of the hard foundational work that kind of sucks when you're an instructor um but anyway yeah there are plenty of things that do suck about being a dive instructor um, but I wouldn't have changed my um, uh, my experience as an instructor for a boring office job just sat behind a desk in my 20s um, you gain so many exciting stories and experiences and of course jealous looks from friends who are like junior sales executives um, Remember to check out today's sponsor, TechLine. Uh, they make everything from regulators and backplates to all of those little bits and bobs that you need to go scuba diving. Uh, you can check them out by visiting techlinediving.eu or clicking this link up here. Uh, I've also reviewed a bunch of their dive equipment on the channel, um, so just check and, uh, and search around. And remember to check out our website, scubadivingmag.com. And of course, consider a magazine subscription for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.